Hello, I am Kevin Anderson. And I'm Adam Okada. And we are clinical educators and hosts of the Ask the Educator podcast, brought to you by Healthmark, a getting a company. Are you a sterile processing technician, infection preventionist, or biomedical engineer? No matter your role, if you're involved in medical device processing, this podcast is for you. Our goal is to equip you with the knowledge and tools for excellence in medical device processing. Now let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Ask the Educator podcast. This is Kevin Anderson, your host, and with me as usual, uh, Adam Okada, my co-host. And with us for this episode, we have special guest Jill Behrens. Uh, she is currently working with Ambu. So, Jill, what do you what is your role with Ambu right now? I'm a clinical training specialist at Ambu. All right. So that sounds kind of similar to us. We're but we're we're educators, right? So we're all yep. kind of in the same boat. Okay, excellent. I, I just remember meeting you as a program manager out in the in the uh healthcare facilities out in Minnesota, right? And, yeah, uh, yeah. You were we fighting met. the good fight. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, 15 years as a surgical tech. And yep. yes, we I was a program manager for in Minnesota and we we had a great time. I appreciate all that Health Bar brings to the table there. Absolutely. Well, it's great to have you on the podcast and uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So uh, one of the things that I think is really important is if we can just get a little bit of an introduction as to what Ambu does. I know it's a sterile processing podcast. Maybe there's people who are familiar with them. I know they're at HSPA and all the various uh, conferences, uh, but just give us a little background on Ambu as a company and the problems they're trying to solve. Yeah, so I'm guessing most of the listeners know about Ambu from the Ambu bag that can be seen in departments around the hospital or even on TV like we probably see a lot or in the movies. It was created in 1956. Fun fact, the initial company name was Testa Laboratory. In 1986, the name changed to Ambu International. In 2009, Ambu launched the first the world's first single-use bronchoscope and since then We've created a presence with single-use endoscopes in ENT, urology, and the GI spaces. Many of us who work or have worked in those departments where those endoscopes are used or clean understand the multifaceted barriers that we see today that exist. At AMBU, we strive to provide that high-quality single-use endoscope that's sterile and always available for that patient care whenever you need it. Very cool. And yeah, I have seen that Ambu stuff uh, when I'm watching TV and things. I always kind of see it around. But what's new? What's new going on at Ambu over there? So super exciting. Ambu has bioplastics in our endoscope handles. Recently, Ambu received the FDA clearance for our ureoscope and the gastro large, which will be used in GI procedures that need that therapeutic scope. We've also expanded our production capabilities in North America. Okay, so I'm guessing if I'm kind of questioning something that our listeners are probably questioning it as well, but you mentioned bioplastics. Like, what exactly are bioplastics and what does it matter? Like, what is the role that plays in this whole uh, single-use scope thing? Like, why is it important? Yeah, bioplastics. It's really interesting, right? Like, I had never actually heard about it when it came up in our discussions. So bioplastics are made from a second-generation bio-based feedstock, meaning that they're made from byproducts and waste such as used cooking oil. It doesn't complete with any food or agricultural productions. It opens the possibility to recycle that organic waste into valuable resources, and it also reduces the carbon footprint. That's awesome. And, you know, that's one of the things that the hospitals are really focusing on is those green initiatives and all kinds of things like that. And that's why I think why disposable scopes come up as kind of a hot topic in the industry. So as far as the disposables, has there been any evidence of improved patient outcomes uh, since we've seen this uh, disposable scope to come on the market? Yeah, there are a couple of studies that are done. There's one study that's called Conversion to Disposable Cystoscopes Decreased Post-Procedure Encounters and Infections Compared to Reusable Cystoscopes. So they evaluated for the difference in post-procedure 30-day encounters or infections following the office cystoscopy that uses disposable versus reusable cystoscopes. In the research, they found that disposable cystoscopes were associated with a lower number of post-procedure encounters and the positive urine cultures compared to reusable cystoscopes. I also had found another study called Single-Use versus Reusable Rhinolaryngoscopes 
and inpatient otolaryngology consults, resident and patient experience. The results had showed that the patients rated single use higher for understanding of their illness and the treatment rationales, which I thought was really interesting because if we're looking at somebody who may not understand their illness and then having that patient or family understand much better, that's super great. Yeah, absolutely. What an interesting sort of side effect of the whole thing. Like, who would have guessed that? <laughs> yeah. Um, and being in those procedures, I do hear, you know, we all know of the IP scopes. And when we bring in our platform and we plug it in and the patients can see, see real time and they've had those follow-up procedures month after month. And so it's such a significant change for them. That real-time feedback and that conversation, you can just tell how much at ease they feel. So that's really cool to see for that patient to really understand their anatomy and see some of that stuff that they've never been able to see before. Yeah, that is interesting. I don't know that, um, you know, some, I, I'm guessing some of the, you know, procedures you're talking about are those ones that are done in the clinic, obviously knowing anesthesia, things like that. Uh, so um, no, that would be, that would be really cool. I know some people are like, uh, let you know, they like to watch people give them shots and things like that. And other people are like queasy about it, but I'm sure for those that are really inquisitive, they would love that sort of thing. Um, but you know what, one of the things that is, you know, obviously a really big issue, uh, when it comes to healthcare at large, or even just society at large is the sustainability thing. And anytime, you know, somebody thinks of the possibility of, of disposable endoscopes and the massive volume of scopes that we do uh, procedure wise in, uh, you know, obviously North America alone, but the world at large, again, you know, uh, obviously that sustainability uh, point is going to be a concern. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of speak to that part of it. I know that there's, you know, hospitals that really are looking at this right now. Yeah, I do. I do think to you and Adam's point, you know, when we were talking about bioplastics previously, that we were talking about all of that and that there's sustainability solutions that all these hospitals are looking into. So I think a couple of things when we talk about sustainability, we're really trying to reduce the carbon footprint at AMBU and healthcare facilities could use a medical waste recycling company such as Sharps. They then recycle the scopes and break them down. With this process, I also wanted to point out that the endoscopes would be recycled and not recleaned, re-sterilized for use again, like we see in some other third-party processes on different medical devices. That's usually the concern that I hear with the disposable scopes is that, oh, well, what about the environmental footprint and all these things? So it's great that there's actually companies working on these types of solutions like AMBU is. Uh, any final thoughts that you want to give to our listeners about uh, AMBU or the disposable scopes? Yeah, I would like to let you know if you want to learn more or you're interested in a product demo or evaluation at your organization, please reach out through the contacts tab on AMBU US website. We also have a lot of uh, brochures or more information. You can kind of tap around and see what the different parts of the endoscopes are. And then also our AMBU AVU2 Advanced Monitor supports the pulmonary ENT and urology endoscopes all in one platform that can create portability and increase service lines for patient care for your organization or any of your providers. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jill. We appreciate you being a guest on the show. Uh, obviously, AMBU is out there trying to solve uh, or at least help solve a very serious problem in healthcare today. And uh, we appreciate that, of course. And uh, it's great to have you on and we wish you the best. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the invite and the time. All opinions expressed on this episode are those of the presenters. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Before using any medical device, it's important to review the manufacturer's instructions for use and consult with a professional. For any questions or feedback, please reach out to us at asktheeducator at hmark.com.